our end station. There'll be a wafer. Typically, this is a gold one. There'll be a full size three inch wafer that we typically use. Um, in our process, we take a full wafer, we cut it up into little pieces so that we can do experiments just using a little piece at a time so we don't waste the whole wafer on an experiment. Is that gallium arsenide? That would be a gallium arsenide piece. This is a silicon wafer that we just use for holding our little piece. Um, this would be the gallium arsenide wafer that's already gone through a lot of processing already. And somewhere halfway down the wafer or something, they want a barrier of material. Uh, they would use that to isolate different components from each other or make electrical contact between one layer and another layer. The thing is, they want to do it halfway down the wafer without anything being above or below it. So, what this is, and what we do here, uh, is our iron source, where we have a hot filament, all under high vacuum. We get uh, a plasma zone, which is the same as inside of our fluorescent tube up here. And then uh, with a high voltage, I encourage them to start going down the pipe. And now, uh, all kinds of things are going down the pipe, and they got to go around this corner. This corner has a back in it. And by readjusting the magnet strength, I can make everything ram into the wall except for the one species that I want. And sometimes they want beryllium. So all they want is beryllium on a certain layer. So everything else slides in the wall, the beryllium continues down the pipe. I focus it into a tight beam, and here is my accelerator tube, which I can change the voltage on that which is, uh, changes the speed at which the ion is coming down and still the impact wafer. We change that by them telling me how deep they want that in the wafer. They want it on a certain layer, really just to be on that particular layer, partway through the wafer at the exact depth. And I adjust that by this voltage. And it goes firing down here and it just runs into a wall all day long. And then I say, okay, implant my wafer. And with an electrical current, I can move my beams and now go straight down the pipe. And then it just goes like this, zigzags up and down a billion times a second. Uh, it just, just uniformly coats the wafer, but not the top surface. It goes down to the depth that I asked. It to go. Is this a pretty standard piece of equipment? Like uh, the guys, the Intel, the AFD, and all yes, that Yes, uh, in fact, this is actually an antique. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's technology's been around. Uh, I bought this new back in
and then in this other machine that you'll hear about, it grows the epi structure, which is a, a stack of 30 layers of stuff. It's now really one with the wafer. It's now one thing. But now you need to cut it up and make connections and stuff. Well, that, that's the part of, of the planarization, meaning keeping the wafer flat. So when you want to isolate this area from this area, you don't cut deep grooves in the wafer to isolate them. I can do it with putting ions in it. And the way this wafer is completely done, which I may have. When it's completely done, it's just as flat and smooth as they start it off with. That's something so you can't do. So what is it that Opal can do that other companies that do Yaga Mars and I cannot do? Why can't they do the same thing? Like, I don't know, RFMD? Because, because but the big thing that most people do, like your cell phone that most of us have, have three chips in it. Because you have silicon, uh, like a silicon chip because you need the logic. And that's what silicon does, it does the logic. And then you got Gally Marsh knife, which can turn electrical into optical and back again to electrical. So a uh, cell phone wants all those components, that there's three chips that's gonna be in your phone. We can do it all in one piece. That's why this is a monolithic chip. It has the logic and it has the optical speed. The silicon is slow compared to Gally Marsh knife. Have you guys done the logic on the chip yet? A, a lot of it has been finished. Yeah. Really? I, I, I don't know how far, because that's not my part of the okay. thing. Uh, I run a few of these big pieces of equipment, sure. and I keep the lab running. That's my primary duty here. Uh, I'm also the facility manager keeping the building, you know, the heating and air conditioning running and stuff like that. So, Go ahead. a new machine, what would be the improvements over this machine? Uh, nothing but daily reliability. That's uh, it? That's it. Uh, there would be, in the, the future, and there's other people who do other stuff, that they want to, these layers I'm telling you about, they want them a lot deeper. And this one doesn't have the power that the new ones do. I go up to 400 kilovolts, which is a lot of, you don't want to talk Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> 4 KV. You only send down a layer, like five to 6,000 angstroms down. Uh, where the mega machines with their claw, they can send it halfway through a wafer. Now, we would never have the need for that, so this one works perfectly. So, so this supplies all your needs? Absolutely. You everything, can do all your research with this machine? Everything, everything we do can be done in this building. Nothing has to be sent out to anything. Ben, I'm still confused. You know, there are other companies that do Gally Marcinite and they do this iron implantation. What is it that we can do that they cannot do? No one is, that I know of is working on putting everything together on a single ship. Well, but they could do that if they decided to. Uh, there's nothing unique or nothing. Uh, it would have to put about 10 years worth of research and development in our documents. And what in our patent right. our asset. So they would, it would take them years to ever catch up to us. Because really? they haven't even started yet. Yeah, now I guess the proprietary part is like the, which the 30 layers, like which layers you're putting where, exactly yeah. what you're putting on each layer. Yeah, we don't share that information with anybody. Of course, anybody. no, I don't even want you to tell me. <laughs> right. That's, that's the secret sauce, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. What is it, son? Yeah. Uh, it's the fact that you, like, Jeff's putting 30 layers together, and then and it's a specific layer, and exactly which, what are you putting in each layer? Beryllium yeah, or that's whatever? The Oh, yeah, that's the stuff that's not shared with anybody. Oh, I see. And uh, very, very hard to reverse engineer that. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, they can, they can try, but it's every... We have layers that are 12 angstroms or 6 angstroms thick. Your hair is 80, 80 angstroms thick. We have layers that are 12 angstroms thick. It's very hard for a machine to, like, cut through it and see that thin layer. They'll never know. And then they don't know that I've built it with this machine. So, very, very hard, almost impossible to, you know, for anybody 